In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create and use an Expo development build. I spent a very long time on this video making sure it covers everything related to Expo development build in a way that's very easy to follow along. I even created my own documentation. I'm gonna share a link to this Google Doc in the description below. The first big thing to know is EAS build does not cost money, guys. There is a free plan. In a lot of the videos out there, I've seen people wait to the very end to talk about EAS build. They almost treat it like you shouldn't use it. What I am telling you is please use EAS build. It is not complicated. Literally, we're gonna do this in the video, but all you have to do is NPM install globally EAS CLI on your computer and you're done. You already have EAS build set up, ready to go. It just makes everything easier. If you do not use EAS build, it kind of defeats the purpose of using Expo. You're probably gonna end up building a, kind of a pre-build out, which is sort of like ejecting out of Expo. You'll end up with an Android folder, an iOS folder, which really what you're doing is you're leaving Expo at that point. You're kind of going back to React Native. It defeats the whole point of having Expo. The point of Expo is you don't have to worry about configuring anything or pre-builds or anything like that. You ought to just let EAS build handle everything for you. So your first step is to npx expo install expo dev client, paste that into your terminal. Next step is to npx expo start. The thing to look for here is you want it to say using development build. Normally it would say using expo go, but if you install expo dev client, it should say using development build. The next step, if you haven't already, is to npm install dash g e a s c l i. Next, once you've done that, you want to make sure to go to expo.dev. Click the sign up button to create a free account. There's no credit card required. Next, run eas login in your terminal if you haven't already. I already have. This next part is really important. eas init. Run eas init. What this does is it creates a project ID for you and links it to your account. If you go to your app.json file, you'll see a project ID in the app.json file now. Step eight in this documentation that I created is just for iOS. So if you want to create a development build for iOS so that you can test it out on your iPhone. So I'm going to copy this command, paste that in my terminal. It's going to ask you to log into your Apple developer account. You'll need an Apple developer account for iOS development builds to work. Another option if you're not using iOS is to skip this and just go straight to number nine, EAS build Android. You don't have to register a device for Android. You can just end up creating an APK file that will be installed onto your phone. And that's how it works for Android. But I wanna show you how to do it for iOS since it's a bit more complicated. I wanna make sure you know how to do that too. Go ahead and log into your account. And as you run EAS device create, Make sure to open up this documentation here, paste it there, and you'll only need to do this the first time you do this. You have to create what's called a provisioning profile. You'll want to make sure to follow this documentation. The easiest thing to do here when it says, how would you like to register your device? I would just say website because then you'll just be able to open up a URL on your iPhone. Now that you've selected web, it gets you to number two in the documentation. You can scan this code right here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and scan this on my phone and show you what happens. The other option is to copy this URL, send it to yourself by email and open it up. This is where it went on my phone. I'm gonna download the profile, select allow. And now the profile is downloaded. The next step says to open up your settings and find the provisioning profile. And so I found it right here. Click the install button, install again, and it should end up saying your device is ready to run internal distribution builds. And so now your iPhone is ready to go ahead and start installing development builds. And so now we can go on to step nine. Next, you can go ahead and copy this command from number nine. Paste that into your terminal. It should say EAS build platform. You want to say either iOS or Android. We're doing iOS right now. And you want to make sure to say dash dash profile development. You want it to be a development build specifically. So let's go ahead and paste that. 
Before I answer these questions here, you'll notice when you run EAS build the first time, it automatically creates an EAS.json file for you. There's three different build types. There's development, preview, production. We're creating a development build. That's why we said EAS build. And so it goes to the EAS.json file, looks for build, and then the next dash dash is platform. You let it know if it's iOS or Android, and then it looks for the profile that you give it. And we said development. Something to know about this is you can build more kind of builds. Like there's a way to uh, build an APK build if you wanted to specifically create APK files. I won't go through that in this video, but I recently made a video on how to set up Firebase push notifications and test them out with an APK file. I'll link in the description below. It shows how to do this, but we can go ahead and follow the instructions now. After you run that command, you can just say yes to everything. At this point, it'll ask you to log into Apple again because it's gonna be setting up push notifications, things like that. So it's really important you say yes to all of this. And if you're using something like nativenotify.com push notifications, you can follow along in the iOS instructions to go through this. Basically all this says though is say yes to everything. And then that'll guarantee that your push notifications are working correctly. Then it's gonna say, select a device that you wanna download this development build to. This is the iPhone I just registered. This is really, really important. If it says, would you like to set up push notifications, say yes especially if you're using nativenotify.com, make sure to say yes or push notifications won't work. Once you've said yes to everything, it should start saying build in progress. You can check on the progress by going to the build details link that it gives you in the terminal. It'll take you here to show you the progress. Something to know is if you are using the free plan, it does take longer sometimes because you basically have to wait in line, but most of the time it doesn't take more than 30 minutes. A lot of the times it's less than 10 minutes. If you do upgrade to the usage based plan, it's usually right away that they start building your app. I'm using the usage based plan. That's why they went ahead and said you're waiting in priority queue. And then I went ahead and automatically got the build in progress. The usage plan is very uh, reasonable. I am not getting paid to say this, by the way. I just really think this is a great deal. As you can see, it's only for the price plan, it's only like a dollar per build for Android, $2 for iOS. I use EAS quite a bit, and I don't think I've ever gotten above like $20 to $30 in a month. Most of the months it's less than that. But again, like I said, it's okay to just use the free plan. Another thing to mention here is once you have a build built the first time, you'll be able to make changes to it instantly. So you're not gonna have to wait over and over and over for a new build to be built. You really just need to build your Expo development build one time, and then you can use it like Expo Go because the updates take place instantly. And I'll show you that in a little bit after the build is finished. That again is why I would say, even if it takes a while for the, the free plan, I would still do that because it's just so much easier. And you can then use it like Expo Go, make changes instantly, and it's still free. Once it's finished, you should see a big barcode like this and also a link that you can open in your phone to open up the app to install it onto your phone, the development build. But first, make sure to run NPX Expo Start again if you haven't already. Make sure it says using development build. Your server needs to be running for you to be able to install your development build onto your phone. And I'll go ahead and scan this on my phone and make sure you're not accidentally scanning the Expo Start scanner. That won't work. You have to come back up to the really big one. Scan that. It will ask if you want to install this. Once you click install, you should see it start to install onto your phone. And there's your app right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. This is in the documentation too. If this is your very first time on an iPhone, you're gonna have to turn on developer mode. So this pop-up is gonna pop up. What I would suggest is follow the instructions just as I put them in my documentation in the Google Docs that I'll share in the description because in the Expo documentation, it tries to get you to do this ahead of time and it's just confusing. It's better just to install it onto your phone. Go ahead and click okay. And I have the documentation right here. So you wanna wait till step 12 when you've already installed it onto your phone. Open up this link and it'll show how you click OK and then it'll tell you what to do from there. Go to privacy and security 
in your settings page. Click privacy and security. And at the bottom, there should now be something called developer mode. Click on that and then turn on developer mode. And this is the last thing you gotta do. It's gonna ask you to restart your phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart my phone. And I know that was a lot, but that is all you have to do. And you're officially set up into the future. Once your phone reloads, make sure to run NPX Expo Start if you happen to have a closed server. Just make sure it's on. And now you can finally scan your NPX Expo Start code and your development build should open. Click allow, click reload if you need to. All right, and this is your app. You'll wanna make sure to say allow if you have push notifications set up and you can continue. And now the app is actually on your phone. And what's different about this is it's not like a web view kind of like Expo Go. It's like a real app on your phone. And so you can send push notifications. And like I said earlier, you can instantly update things. So I'm gonna say welcome development build. And as you can see, it instantly updated. So this is like what I was saying. You don't have to rebuild your app every single time you make a change. You can still see the changes instantly. And I'm going to test out sending a push notification just to make sure it's working. Test development notification test. And I just got it right there. There's the push notification. The reason I'm pointing out push notifications is this is something that's going to break in Expo Go for version 53. Um, so I'm currently getting the Expo notifications, but these are not going to work anymore in version 43. You're going to have to use a development build for things like push notifications and also other programs inside of your app. So it's good to just go ahead and switch to development build. Now, say you want to run your app on a simulator. I went ahead and added a 15th step, you can go to this documentation right here. It shows you what you need to do to, to run a build of your app on an iOS simulator. You can come here and copy this preview iOS simulator. Come back to your EAS file. I'm going to put it down here. Since there's already a preview, I'm going to say iOS preview. Then you can come back here, copy this. You'll have to go through it once for any device you want to show it on whether it's a phone or a simulator or an emulator. I'm going to go ahead and say EAS build iOS. And instead of profile preview, I'm going to say profile iOS preview to match what I just created here. Run that. You can check your progress at the link they give you. And like I said, you're going to have to wait for the build to finish one more time. But after it builds one time, you can use it like it's Expo Go, making updates instantly. One of the great things about doing this is you don't need test flight or to have an Apple developer account to do this. So if you're not ready to create an Apple developer account, but still want to test out your app on a simulator with a development build, you can do this by building a development build for iOS simulator. Once you're finished building a simulator build, it will automatically ask you if you want to install and run the iOS build on a simulator. Make sure your simulator is open and say yes. And you can do the same thing for an Android emulator. And again, with an Android emulator, it's a lot easier to do all of this for Android. You don't have to register a device or go through any of uh, these steps here. You can just build the Android APK file and Expo can go ahead and run it on your emulator. So as you can see, it's open. It's successfully launched. I'm gonna go ahead and run NPX Expo Start again. And now that it's installed on my emulator, I can say I, and I should be able to make instant updates now. So I'll say iOS development build. I'm gonna try tapping R. It's saying there's no app connected. So I'm gonna try closing this and saying I again to open it up. Okay, and so now it should work. Okay, and it looks like actually for the simulator version, you may have to run a new build each time you make an update. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments below. I'm currently not seeing any updates in the simulator build whenever I make an update to the text, but I do see the update on an actual phone. So if you have the development build on your actual phone, it looks like it works instantly on your phone. But as you can see, I don't see an update on the simulator. 
but I do see the instant update on my phone. Another thing I did notice is sometimes if I open up my phone, it has a white screen after an update. If you only see a white screen, the way I was able to fix it was to close the app out completely, kill it, and then open it again, and then the update was there. Another option is to type the letter R in your terminal to reload the app on your phone. But again, the updates aren't working on a simulator, but you can still create a simulator app and install it onto a simulator. You would just need to create a new build each time. So maybe for a simulator, you would want to use like Expo Go if it's still supported into the future. But again, I can definitely verify that it is working on an actual device. You see the updates instantly. And from then on, it looks and feels just like Expo Go. You can make instant updates. And apparently everything feels more real. It's like you actually have your real app on your phone installed onto your phone. Again, I'll put the Google Doc in the description below. If I forget, please let me know in the comments. I try my best to put all the different documentation together into a simple to follow along document. If you ever have any suggested updates to the document, you can let me know in the comments below and I can update it. Feel free to share the link to the document and also try to put a link to this video in the document too so people can follow along. Let us know what you think about the new development build process in the comments below. Do you like the new process? Or do you wish you could just stick with Expo Go? There's a chance the Expo team will see this video and see your comments. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.